Under Connecticut General Statute 8-30J, like all Connecticut towns, Ridgefield was mandated to prepare a so-called affordable housing plan. But, quote, affordable housing is defined in Connecticut by state statute 8-30G, which is to say, no matter how low the rent, a unit is not affordable unless restricted to low-income tenants. So instead of an affordable housing plan that addressed the housing needs of Ridgefielders, whose incomes largely disqualify for low-income housing, the Affordable Housing Committee created a self-disparaging manifesto seeking to fulfill the incompatible low-income housing quotas of 8-30G. That give developers a cudgel to emasculate locally elected zoning officials. This led to a cascade of acrimonious public hearings at which the Affordable Housing Committee chair, who has now resigned from the committee, was a lightning rod. Fast forward to July 12, 2023. The Board of Selectmen seeks to fill the vacancy on the Affordable Housing Committee. Listen in on their interview with Jennifer Brackenwagon, one of two candidates seeking appointment. Oh, thank you. Let me introduce you to everyone. Hi, Sean. 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 Okay, Jennifer is here for a position on the Affordable Housing uh, Committee. We do have two, one vacancy, so okay. next meeting will be interview you, so we won't be voting tonight. Understood. But thank you for being here. Uh, for tell us a little me. bit about yourself that we may not otherwise read about. Um, well, I forget, I gave you a full. Yes, you yes. did. So, so I'm Jennifer Brackenlion, originally from Ohio, the greatest state. Connecticut's pretty close. Peter, yeah. How long have you been here? here um, <laughs> I've been here, I think, 18 years. Oh, yeah. no, it, 18 so that's, years. Yeah, 18 years. And Ohio is still better? Well, you grow up place in it. <laughs> We, but you've not been in Ridgefield this whole time, is that? No, we were in New Fairfield for 15 okay. years, desperate to get here the whole time. I will tell you a quick story. If you want to know my entire um, world in Ridgefield um, and world in, in Connecticut, we had two afternoons to find a home. Our real estate agent took us through the hills of Ridgefield, and then she took us through the hills of New Fairfield, and the houses in 2005, summer of 2005, were $70,000 more in the hills of Ridgefield than they were in the hills of New Fairfield. Mm -hmm. So we picked the hills of New Fairfield. And then I think I, and when we moved here, I was um, 30 weeks pregnant. And I went and just go out driving every day. And then one day I magically happened upon um, Main Street. And I called my husband crying because I was emotional and pregnant. And said, <laughs> what did we do? We need to move. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he said, we're probably never moving. And I said, we have to get to this town. And so I literally spent 15 years trying to get here. My kids went to Enchanted Garden. Are you still married to him? Uh, yeah, <laughs> today. No, um, we, um, my kids went to Enchanted Garden. I yeah. was one of the first customers at the Cake Box in their really old location. Uh -huh. I worked for Monica and Todd at the cheese shop. So uh -huh. I did everything I could to become a part of Rich. Well, that's wonderful. And then um, during the pandemic, I finally convinced him to sell the house. We looked at 50 houses, couldn't find one. Moved into Fox Hill for a year because we knew this is where we wanted to be. And then um, we found our dream house. And so now That's this is the first place since Waterville, Ohio, that I have ever thought of as a home, a permanent home. And that's why I'm excited to be here today, because when you live in a place, you want to make your community better every day. And I think that's something the Affordable Housing Committee does. Yeah. Um, I think everything else is on the resume. I was in the military. I was in the United States Navy. Thank I you went for to, your service. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I went to um, the Ohio State University. And then I've spent the last, um, the majority of the last 17 years as a mom. I have worked in building supply sales on and off since then, and then before I had kids. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank Appreciate you. that. We'll go to the board for any questions you may have. Okay. Barbara. Um, what, um, what do you think you can add to the Affordable Housing Committee? I think I'm somebody who really likes to look around a table and hear what everybody at the table has to say. And I think you know, with the Affordable Housing Committee and with what its position is in the town, I think not only do we have to be listening to what the people at the table are saying, I think we need to be listening to what the community as a whole is saying. 
So I think what I bring to the committee is that I don't, um, I'm not affiliated in any way that keeps me from listening and um, making a decision based on what I'm hearing rather than bringing in preconceived notions. So I would say really, I don't have an agenda, but I would like to listen to everybody and come to a consensus. Okay, you're still you're still new, which is a good thing <laughs> in this I case. Am, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm still very new to the town, but not new to the politics. I mean, I remember when I used to say, "Why isn't John Hodge reading Marconi?" <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I am. I'm new to the town, but I've been paying attention. I never was involved in this way in New Fairfield, but I did a lot to help drive. Um, education change in New Fairfield, I would say. And then I was also very briefly the reporter, the town reporter for the um, newspaper. Mm. Oh! Which we still have a, well, not we, but New Fairfield still has a very privately owned little newspaper, which is. It's really very fortunate. It, very fortunate, yes. Yeah. Wow. Good. Yeah. Uh, so, Sean, oh, I'm, sorry, I'm, right. the paper. Uh, I'm just going to, so. Um, Kind of just what's your sense of what you think the goal of uh, the Affordable Housing Committee should be? Uh, well, I, I think I would point you to looking at, um, I think the goal of the Affordable Housing Committee has been somewhat limited so far in that I think the requirement for the plan and the way that some of the movements toward the plan were done is that we limited what the scope of the plan could be. And I think if you look at the Greenwich affordable housing plan, that's much more in line with what I think we should be thinking about. We should be thinking about affordable housing, not just the requirements from the state, but as a goal for our community. And you know, we talk about middle income people getting a home and we say teachers and firefighters and stuff, but they're actually in our state somewhat decently paid. But we have to look at other retail associates. We have to look at middle income, we have to think of how can we have market rate homes that are appealing to a vast majority of people. If you look at, um, what is it, our plan of conservation and development and the surveys they did about multifamily residential development and where we need to look at, we have an aging population in this town. Are we doing everything we can as far as multifamily development, multi-housing to encompass what those needs will be 5, 10, 15 years from now, as well as do we have places where younger kids can come home and live here before they have a family and might buy a home. So I like to think of affordable housing as all encompassing of the community's needs, not just the limitations that the state might put on them as far as affordable housing, trying to get a moratorium, things like that. I think that really narrows the focus too much and it leaves the community of Bridgefield out of what we really need to do. That's great. Sure. Yes. Yeah. No. But um, it was very interesting. Um, if you looked at Padilla's, oh, I'm sorry. If you looked at Padilla's report, um, in ten ten years from now, thirty percent of Ridgefield will qualify as seniors. Yeah. That's. What age are you looking at? Sixty, fifty-five. I I think. She was, I don't know for sure, because I didn't look at the definitions the in the report. The total count started at 55. So, so. I think if you look at our existing affordable housing plan, they have some um, but very similar statistics in yeah, there. 30% of, of the town. Mm -hmm. Our grants for seniors start at 65. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. Founders Hall, you have to be 60, right. Right. I think. Um, Art, you have to be 50. <laughs> I'm almost there. My husband's 55. He's very excited about he, what he gets. <laughs> um, I want to make a comment. That I do, well, let me give my, my question is, is um, you know, the, the newspaper was intriguing. Okay, mm -hmm. we spoke about there because we, for all practical and intense purposes, we don't have a Ridgefield press anymore, very sad, which is very it? sad, yeah. Um, you might want to, just as a sidebar, you might want to think about starting something like that. I've been thinking, how can I do a newsletter? And I don't know if you know, but there's actually this amazing nonprofit that yeah. buys local newspapers so they can stay local. And they just bought in Maine this week, I want to say it was um, seven local newspapers, um, the Portland Press Herald on down, so they can stay local independent newspapers. 
So I wish we would have gotten that instead of first, just because. Yeah. First. Yeah. Oh, please. Well, it's it just because they don't really give you local coverage. They yeah. slot in a few articles, but you don't really get the well, coverage we that the makes daily it. And the weekly. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Right. So yeah. no, I think about that often. How do so, you start that? Okay. Um, <laughs> the um, <laughs> just very quickly though. I mean, you you have a, you know a lot of interest in other areas, but why affordable housing? I mean, what is it? Because, because this is why. It not bef before I moved here, I don't think I'd ever given two thoughts to affordable housing. But I watched how the plan together came together. I watched the community. I'm looking at the state as a whole, and I think I actually even wrote to the board of um, selectmen last year about this. Connecticut has requirements, and no matter how you feel about those requirements, we have to accept them, and we have to understand we need to make those requirements part of the community. And so the one thing that I think I observed most through the process of the affordable housing plan was I didn't feel the community was a part of what was going on there. Maybe I'm misunderstanding, maybe I misread the situation, but I didn't feel like when I was attending meetings or trying to speak that I was listened to, and I would like to be a part of the committee for as that, I would like to be a part of that committee moving forward that kind of improves the way the community understands that committee and hears from that committee. And I really think that, um, I think that um, the person who just left the committee was polarizing, but I also think that passion is really impressive. And I love anybody who has passion for something. And I love anybody who really is interested in hearing and making a change in the world. I just think that this change that actually needs to happen because the state requires it, needs to require a little more listening the next time and as we move forward. Okay. So, uh, so my, I guess my answer is because I want to feel that the community feels they have somebody who will always listen. And that goes back to what I was saying about being the person at the table who wants to listen to everything as well as talk. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I, um, you said something else earlier that I was very happy to hear, and that mm -hmm. was to look at the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't hear you say, and, and I'm hoping you meant to say this, mm -hmm. uh, but look at the needs of the town. Oh yeah, okay. absolutely. I mean, yeah. That's what we do. You you, you sort of touched sure. on a little bit about the, you know, the seniors sure. and the elderly mm -hmm. and all right. that. Um, I'm, an, I, I'm not going to debate this with you here tonight, mm -hmm. okay? Thank you. But, the, <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to say, I, just something to think about, okay? Right. And by the way, I will tell you, you came highly recommended oh. to me okay. from someone, so. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, I yes, the state has mandates. Right. And you said, you, you did say, you know, the, we shouldn't be solving for you know, just for the mandates. We got to look at, you did say, we got to look yeah, at the what the right. community needs. <laughs> And uh, so I, you know, I think that's really what we need to do is look at our current inventory, right. look at what our needs are, mm -hmm. and then we need to tell that story uh, to the community and to the state. Can I give you a really good example of that right uh, now? I don't think we have time for oh, that, sorry, go I'm ahead. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. just very quickly, um, Desegregate Connecticut is doing an audit walk of Ridgefield yeah. to walk around. But we should have the Committee on Aging. We should have our groups that work with differently abled people. A audit walk should be done with all I of those groups. That. Okay, because that is what lets you know what the community needs. And I think affordable housing, transportation, these things all go together. Mm -hmm. And if we're, not, if we're only thinking in that one silo, we're re really missing what the community needs. Right. So I agree with you wholeheartedly. Okay. And I do think that we need to make a word, we need, need to make statements to the state about the limitations they they are placing on us and how that might affect the community. But I also don't want to say, I don't want to be naive that I think 830G is going anywhere tomorrow, because it's not. And until it can, we have to keep working within that framework for our community, not just what they're telling us, but what the people here need. Thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you for you, Jennifer. waiting for us and being a cameraman, too. Yeah. Camera woman. Well, camera, <laughs> camera person. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I decided no person. Did I just do that? That's all right. Sorry. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,
As I said earlier, we have another candidate to interview, so we're going to hold off on any appointment at this okay. point in time. Okay. But we may want you to come back to refresh our memory. Oh, okay. okay. So we'll <laughs> let you know. When is that date? Uh, August 16th. Okay. Maybe my son college Oh, congratulations. So, okay. <laughs> All right. Well. Well, we'll meet in September as okay. well. This is Kirk Carr on the record. Thank you for watching.